One thing that perhaps I should explain to people because unfortunately the word calligraphy has been misused for quite a number of years now. People say calligraphy when it isn't calligraphy and perhaps I should explain what the difference is between what I'm doing here and calligraphy and other forms of lettering. Lettering is the umbrella term for anything to do with letters. So this now you can say is carved lettering or carved dragon if you wish in this instance. But calligraphy means kalos and graphos. It comes from two words from the Greek from, and it means beautiful writing. Well this is not writing, this is carving. So anything that is, calli is calligraphy has to be written either with a steel pen or in the olden days of the monks with a quill. So it is what's loosely called a thick and thin letter if you wish, done by the way that the pen is um, held and written. So it is just like what you see in the old manuscripts. So that is what calligraphy is. But people think that anything to do with letters is calligraphy, but it isn't. Calligraphy is just a branch of lettering as sign writing is a branch of lettering and carving is a branch of lettering. So this is not calligraphy, it's carving letters. But the important thing is that what you won't see in here is the influence of the pen letter, the calligraphy on these forms. And if you wrote with two pencils stuck together with a bit of tape, you find that you produce something similar to this when you have the control on it. So all the letters here may have started off with a pen, right? But then adapted for the chisel, if you want to call it. But its roots are very firmly in the pen letter. And if you look at the closely at this drug, and when you see that is a calligraphic stroke. It's true. And, and you have the same thing when, when it comes down to there, but of course. The pen, can't, the, the pen can't do that without manipulation. Then you've got to change it to suit the material. So it's, the basis is calligraphy, but the execution is not. So very loosely again is calligraphy is only beautiful writing. So anything that's written is calligraphy, but this is carved, so it's not calligraphy. Although it has strong calligraphic influences in, in the shapes. In calligraphy in particular, more than here in carving, there are so many beautiful works of literature and poetry that is absolutely wonderful for calligraphers to write and to express in ways that's appropriate to the text and to the purpose of the poem. But I have been criticized, and I don't mind admitting to it, by many eminent calligraphers saying that I should be ashamed of myself for writing poetry, out poetry, that's done by an inferior poet, hmm? not a well-known poet, that they feel I should only write out the works of the most important calligraphers, uh, sorry, uh, poets. And they think I'm selling, selling, selling my soul, if you want to, to inferior work. And that annoys me, because to me, it's the doing that matters, and whether you're doing the right thing for the people you're working to. But, you know, for example, I have people coming to me who are not poets, whose English very often is very bad. And, but this man loves his wife. They've been married for 20 years and he wants her to know how much he loves her, right? And he's written her a poem. And some of these poems, I cringe when I read them, they're so bad. Mm -hmm. And I feel, why should I, you know, do this kind of thing? It's terrible. But then I say to myself, well, that's wrong. This chap wants to show his wife how much he loves her. Yeah. And he's taken the bother from his heart produce this poem. So does it matter if it's not the best work in the world, if it's come from the heart, and it means a lot to him. So I tend to ignore the 
the wording, and I just think of the love that's behind it, and that gets me through it. Mm. And I think that's very important, I think. But lots of professional calligraphers will shoot me for saying that, but then I stick to what I believe in. 